Ladies and gents, welcome back to Oz Game as you are here once again with Stephen Farrelly coming to you from the Gamescom show floor out of EA's booth. I've got two very special guests with me today, uh, Chavat and Rasmus. You guys know them from uh, the Crytek team. You know that they're working on this fantastic game, this fantastic series, Crisis 3. Um, I, I want to start with uh, what, what you guys learnt, I think, uh, coming off Crisis 2. Uh, I mean, it was sort of, you know, you took, the, you took the series to console, you're pushing CryEngine 3. What's kind of been the process for you guys moving forward with uh, Crisis 3? Yeah. So one of the first learnings was that the sandbox formula that we have depicted in Crisis 2 wasn't really as free as it could be and should be. So gamers wanted more freedom and more open spaces. Uh, that's one thing. Second was that the story was a bit too complicated in a sense, so that it was too implicative, it was too much like you have to assume things and, and, and guess things. And so it wasn't. A, it should have been more direct in the face a little bit. And also, I think the characters were a little bit fa flat, and they could be more richer. So we took a lot of this feedback to heart, and and also had an own idea of what to do with Crisis Three, and and try to melt the con the gamer feedback as well as our vision, and and, and make Crisis Three with that. And um, in terms of the tech side of things, what's changed with the engine for you guys? Um, more optimized? Uh, you, you're getting more power out of it, obviously, because it looks fantastic. Yeah, so CryEngine 3 has been uh, really pushed forward now as being a next-gen technology. So we, we, we launched CryEngine 3 like two years ago as a next-gen technology for upcoming generations of gaming. And we want to depict with Crisis 3 the first next-gen game of current and PC next-generation gaming. So with current-gen console and consoles and next-gen PC specifications, you're going to get a glimpse of what the future will entail already now with Crisis 3, future in Crisis 3. Um, is there any reason you guys are sticking with New York for, for the foundation for the game? So it's kind of interesting because... Uh, on one hand, you could say that that makes things more difficult for us because people will immediately go like, oh, that's because it's a lot easier. But obviously, it's the exact opposite of easier because, first of all, obviously, we don't want to cut corners, right? That's one. And second, uh, the thing we're doing now, we're creating this urban rainforest, which is this artificially grown rainforest on top of New York. It actually creates a lot of drama to take a very, very known environment and then completely screw it up, literally, right? Like. You, you shouldn't you feel like you're in a rainforest but you always get these reminders at certain points where holy this is you know and then you realize that you're actually in New York which is which is emotionally uh, powerful even if you don't live there and if you are an American especially I mean people Americans have take New York and especially people living in New York take it very close to their hearts you know it's gonna be a very very rich experience and also it creates some consistency in the storytelling, you, you experienced New York, you saw the transformation that it had, and, and that's already a crazy transformation, and now we just take that and amp it up incredibly in a completely different way than the kind of alien takeover that it had in, um, in uh, Crisis 2, right? So... But we're finishing the story as well. Yeah, that, it wraps yeah. up the trilogy also, right? So it's, uh, it, it actually is, is, is very empowering from a storytelling uh, point of view, and it's emotionally very rich to do it like that. On top of that, we have this Seven Wonders concept, which is seven very diverse mood and layout takes on New York City, which um, which also creates a richness and a diversity that we haven't had in any previous Crisis games, which is really cool as well. Not only from a mood and visual and art direction point of view, but also from a gameplay point of view, because we can create everything from very condensed thing, if you want that, to very, very, very open things, if, if that's what the experience asks for at that point. So. In the second game, it seemed like uh, you had this kind of really bright uh, intro to the game, and then all of a sudden, halfway through, it gets really dark. And that's kind of you know when you're going from uh, dealing with Cell to actually dealing with the alien threat. What's the pacing been like for Crisis 3? Are, are we going to have that immediate switch, or is it kind of converged a little bit more now? I think Crisis 3 is more consistent in that regards, but there is a, a big uh, re revelation at the right at the beginning, like and you are put in this uh, scenario of what's going on here. So there's more question marks being posed on you implicitly through the world and how the world is depicted. And you find the answers as you go through the journey and you are more explorative to the world. So the world is actually much more part of the storytelling than it was in Crisis 2. So I would say that you have this kind of revelation at the beginning, this change, but and the game is taking a pacing forward for sure. So it doesn't actually stop there but it's not as black and white, so it's more on a ramp as opposed to on a sharp uh, contrast. I would also say that uh, we probably... Um, we've made a we, obviously, we haven't talked about what that is yet, but we have a very, very strong hook in the game, and uh, 
probably it's also a little more instantly in the campaign yes. and the, the whole setup than, than Crisis 2 is, which ramps up much more gradually until the alien invasion where there is this big spike in the in story and should we say like action intensity all of a sudden. Um, which is a which which paces out the storytelling and the whole thing a little differently. I'm not saying that one necessarily is better than the other. It's just very different from Crisis Two in that regard. So. Uh, you guys also had um, pretty unique level design in the second game, um, with a lot more verticality than most other shooters. A lot of shooters, even uh, ones that profess to be open world, tend to kind of you know just have this flat surface for players to play through, and just uh, you know a lot of corridors and 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 that. You actually have uh, you actually have a um, a really rich kind of vertical world. Has that been ramped up again, or are you just kind of just going through that that level design process that was similar to Crisis Two? Yeah. So in Crisis Three, we are we're going to have much more Crisis One like uh, open world approach, which gives you a more non-linear experience but wider range. So the feel the world feels more open, but also there will be verticality to this, uh, to this aspect as well. So. Verticality was an absent in Crisis 1. Verticality was our key element of Crisis 2. And with Crisis 3, you're going to get some of the best of the best world, of both of the worlds. And I think the sandbox that we will see in Crisis 3 is going to take it vertical wider and hence tell a, be a whole new kind of sandbox. Also, and as mentioned before, like the fact that you have this overgrown city now adds some building blocks that didn't exist before. Before you had to rely on collapsed buildings and stuff, now you could in theory connect a skyscraper with a skyscraper with a huge tree and vines going over something you couldn't do before so it, it, it actually it actually supports verticality on a whole new different level in, in crisis 3 because we don't have to stick to kind of the should we say like the natural confines of the city and how a city would collapse in a, in a war scenario right so. on the PC because uh, that's where your, your guys heritage actually comes from and uh, you know you've got this great tool in, in CryEngine 3 uh, like, what are you guys doing to support the PC community with Crisis 3? Is there anything specific or are you going for platform parity, which is a bit of an ugly word term these days? No, I mean, you know you know, you know that joke, right? That it can run Crisis question, right? And so we will definitely make sure that Crisis 3 will resurrect that question again. Can it run Crisis 3? Yes. And, and we will melt the PCs down as we... <laughs> so, I mean, honestly, we, we will push the PC to a limit, as a, to, a, to its boundaries. And as I said, the idea is that PC will be next-gen gaming, consoles will be current-gen maximizing it. So we can't deliver next-gen per se in current-gen. I mean, we already did that with Crisis 2. Yeah. You know? So it's going to be maximizing the current generation on consoles and giving you a glimpse of next-gen of what it means in a visual and in a simulation and a richness of a world on a PC. And if you have also on a PC, if you have... Um, PC upgrade during the next two years after you played Crisis 3, Crisis 3 will adapt and be looking better and better as we go as well. Okay. So it will be like a future looking forward kind of game as opposed to be a game like that is shipped now and uh, will uh, outdate itself in six months. So it will be not like that. So it will be an, an ever evolving and upgrading and adapting game. Now with multiplayer you've got 16 players for PC, yeah. um, are you guys uh, going to support dedicated servers globally because it's a big question for us in Australia, latency is a huge issue, um, you know, 16 doesn't seem like a huge amount of players, it's a nice intimate game number but it would still be nice for us to be able to you know, have yeah. some oceanic servers would be yeah. great. I mean, we haven't really decided about uh, how we're going to present and talk about this yet but we do have, again our ambitions for multiplayer are huge, we do have big plans for it. But the details about dedicated server and server programs and whatnot, and what it entails, we're not ready to talk about that yet. But rest assured, the team has been, I mean, doing a lot of work on making sure the Crisis 3 multiplayer is the biggest multiplayer offering that we have done so far in the Crisis franchise. Um, well, I played it in there before. The Hunter mode is fantastic. It's really intense, um, and I can't wait to, you know, sink my teeth into it a little bit more. So, thanks for your time today, guys. Thank you. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.